Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. This is part of Tips Blitz 19. Uh, an idea brought up by Emma Ritson and John Creasy out of Australia to try to get a little more views coming for the machining channels out there. Uh, maybe spread it around, get it a little viral, and maybe some people will stop by some people's channels and decide if they like them and stick around and uh, get to see what we're working on and get to share some of the educational experiences that we have. So, uh, one thing a little different about the work that I do to what a lot of people do is my work is not typically held in advice. So, parts I work on tend to be castings of all sorts of various shapes and sizes and it's important to be able to hold them in order to machine them and that can always be a tricky thing and then I tend to work on stuff that's uh, maybe the only one of in existence or it's a high value race component or something like that anyway all of us hate scrap parts and you hate when something messes up and uh, nothing will mess up your machining operations quicker than having a part move on you while you're machining on it. So what I'm gonna go over today is how I help to avoid that from happening. And for my demonstration, we have a 1920 something, probably Model T engine block here. This is a project to be line board at a later date, not in this video. And uh, these valves, this technology predates me by a lot. I've not ever worked on one of these before, so I don't really know a lot about them. But uh, the valves appear to be some kind of a screwed together assembly. They won't just pull out. I wanted to take them out and get them out of the way so that they didn't get damaged in this process, but that's not really gonna be possible. So I've looked at uh, all my reference surfaces, anything that's been machined that I can go off of to set this thing up. And of course, this block has caps that protrude off the bottom, so I can't set it on the pan rails because the caps stick out. Also, it would be more difficult taking a bar in and out, doing measurements and readings with it upside down. So I'm gonna do it sitting on the deck, and I don't wanna mar or scratch up this deck. So what I'm gonna do is set it up on uh, two of my 246 blocks and they'll be able to go across these bores here where the head normally bolts on and this surface is pretty good i don't feel anything sticking up on it uh, i did take a stone and rub it down so there are no burrs sticking up and it should be well within the tolerance probably of a model t and we'll say it's not aerospace grade and i know one of the guys at work he's retired now but uh, he had a model a that uh, they used the shoe leather for rod bearings in for several years because they didn't have the money to fix it any other way during the depression, so that's how they got along. Anyway, let's uh, get this set up here. So, I'll get this up on this deck. The other thing too that lets me be able to move this around, I know there's no burrs or anything on my blocks they're in good shape, so I can sit that up on them and not have to worry about damaging the surface, so. Alright, so I've got that sitting there on the box. 
my eyeball says it's pretty square looking down my slot on the side here. There's nothing machined on this side for me to use a stop lock against. Okay, right, I take it back there is something so let me get some five eight studs for these blocks and I'll be right back. Well here it is all set up. I'll walk you through my setup on this. It's not actually tightened down or nothing because I'm not really going to do this job at this time. This was just a good piece for me to be able to do this video on because it's lots of irregular shapes. And it's a fairly critical type component that you don't want to screw up on. So what I've done is turn this block around. Uh, so the machine surface on this side where the manifolds go on is a nice true hopefully square and planar surface that I can reference off of. So I'm able to take my stop blocks, line them up on my lines in the table, which I have verified and know and can trust to be accurate. So I lined up the edges of them and then I can tighten these bolts down and that blocks it from being able to come this way. Gives it a, a nice solid stop against Then I can take my light and go back in behind these blocks. And see that there's no real light coming through there. Uh, the blocks are up nice and square. So I know that I'm pretty true. I don't have this tipped or rocked over. Supervisors come to check it out and be sure doing good. Then on the other side here, I'm able to go in these pockets uh, with my clamps and I would run the bolts up all the way against the side of the block. So when they're drawn down tight, that acts as a fence on this side too. Let's it not be able to slip this way because uh, the bolts are drawn up against it. This one here needs to move to this slot. I'm not actually doing this job now, so I'm not going to fool with that for this video. But uh, it gives me two clamping surfaces here, and we're sitting on the deck down here on the, these two, four, six blocks. And again, you can see that the sitting square against that intake manifold, so we know we're not tipped over. Should be pretty good to how they did it at the factory. And I got that lined up on that slot there. So it should be good and square within, you know, maybe a thousandth or two. When I put the boring bar in here, I can indicate these bores and check and be sure that everything is running straight and true. But as a first initial setup, I should get it real close and I can tweak it around if I need to. But the main thing is, is that this thing is blocked from being able to move. And I wanted the blocks on this side because on this machine, the only way you can cut is traveling that way. And if you cut back the other way, the table rocks a couple thou and over a couple foot area, it'll be off a thousandth or two. But as long as you go that way, it's within a couple of tenths. So just always go that way and then no problem. So feed in that way and it keeps the table nice and true and square and they can sweep these out, get them a line board, and get it to the customer, and they can put this antique back together. Well, I hope you learned a little something about setups on unusual parts and how to hold them and keep them constrained so that they don't wander off on you while you're machining on them. That's always a bad day. Uh, one of the most important things when you're doing machine work is the setups. That's usually what takes way longer than the actual cutting. But if you don't get the setup right, the cutting won't be any count either. So uh, that's kind of where it all starts. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll catch y'all later. Bailey approves this message and says, go watch some videos. Tip Splits 19.